Hi, everybody. I just want to give you an update on Mullen because they had their shareholders meeting today and I was there for it. So I'm going to give you a brief update as well as to tell you what to expect going forward. And much to my surprise, we did actually vote on the first proposal to affect the reverse stock split. However, please keep in mind that should the uh, um, Court of Chancellery of Delaware decide that the number of shares are off. I do not think they will be able to file anything um, and essentially the vote would not matter. So I think it was more or less to see where they stood and to see if they could get the reverse split. Please don't misunderstand me and think that that doesn't mean it's going to happen because to be perfectly honest with you, um, if the court says that the share count is correct, then yes, they can propose a reverse stock split. And we'll get into that in just a second. But I just want to let you know my thoughts, because if you saw my video last night, I did not think we were even going to vote on this um, until after the meeting, just like he held off on proposal number two. So I was a bit taken back by that, but I truly believe that he just wanted to see if he could do it and hopefully spread the word out there because I know that a lot of you feel that the news we can do a stock split is negative, but it would have been even more negative if the vote did not approve it. And I'll tell you why. Because if Shorts knew that shareholders wouldn't approve it, I promise you they would have continued to short this and sent it to the OTC. And make no mistake about it, I am sure that was their goal. So now that it's kind of like checkmate. Like I have a tool that I don't necessarily need to use, but I can if I need to. So that kind of puts shorts in a position, right? Because they know now Mullen can apply for an additional 180 day extension and effectively avoid a reverse stock split as long as they can get that share price above $1 for 10 days, which I totally believe that they can do. Um, I think especially with what happened with GNS today, and I'll make a video on all of that later in case you missed it, but I think that's going to shed a lot of light and a lot of eyes that aren't necessarily wanted on some of these market makers and hedge funds and whoever it is that is driving down these share prices artificially. Because guys, I'm telling you, in my honest opinion, I doubt that there are any stocks in the stock market that are unaffected by this, even the very, very large cap stocks. It is a sick game that, you know, Wall Street has come up with where they are able to essentially steal money from investors and pension funds and everything else to put into their own greedy little pockets with hopes of bankrupting companies and never having to pay them back or in hopes of nobody ever figuring out what they've been doing for all of these years. Well, guys, I think if more and more hedge funds can get on board that we can put a stop to this. But let's get back to Mullen for now. But I'm only informing you of that because I believe it's not only positive for GNS, I believe it's going to be positive for many stocks, especially these very heavily manipulated ones. And if these CEOs jump on board, God help them, because I think you're going to see a lot of this happening. And I hope that these CEOs hop on board. All right, so let's pull up the share. Okay, guys, so it this article starts off by saying March 6th is an important date for Mullen shareholders because that's the day that Mullen needs to get above $1 per share without having to file an extension. So remember, they would have to do that 10 days in a row of having a close above $1. Now, the positive news is even if they don't close above $1 for, for 10 days prior to March 6th, they can request an extension from the NASDAQ. And if they get approved, guys, Mullen has made it very clear that they want to continue to be in the Russell 2000. So if they do not complete this by May 1st, they are likely to do a reverse stock split. Now, I would say generally knowing this, that shorts are going to continue shorting until they get that reverse stock split because that's a goal of theirs because then once it splits, they'll try to drive it down even further further, making it even cheaper for them to buy back, and then eventually it runs. 
Ultimately, I think that's what their goal is. However, this whole thing with GNS made a put, might have put a little uh, kink in their plan, so to speak. So, at any rate, let's continue. Proposal 4 was also approved, and that seeked to amend the securities purchase agreement so that Mullen can issue $150 million in notes and up to $190 million in additional shares of Series D preferred stock. Guys, that's very negative. I hate to say it, but that just means more dilution and more of them borrowing money. Now, on a positive, if Mullen uses that money for good purposes and not to stuff their own pockets and pay themselves out bonuses and benefits and everything else in this company that is not yet profitable and stops milking shareholders, then this could be a good thing. However, they need to really knock that off because they have no business doing that at this point. I mean, please, I feel that CEOs should be paid and that they should be compensated. But right now, it's a little bit excessive when you haven't produced a single sale of a vehicle yet. So, or you have vehicle purchase orders, but there's no vehicles yet. Um, so, until they're profitable, I think they really need to prove to shareholders that they're going to knock that off. And David Mitchery, if you're listening, with all due respect, I really think you better consider that because it's upsetting a lot of your shareholders and it's not helping the situation. Um, and by the way, I truly believe that David Mitchery and I did send a message to both him and the CEO of Hellbiz stating that I believe that they have been under attack by short sellers. I actually did a video on Hellbiz and David, if you're listening, I highly suggest you watch it because the same holds true with Mullen. The difference is, is that for some things, I agree that Mullen kind of has a right to be shorted, um, based on you know, the frivolous spending, unfortunately. Um, however, that being said, I think that you are under attack. I truly, truly believe that. And I think their target is to bankrupt Mullen, just like they do with so many other companies. And ultimately, unless you start fighting back, they are going to continue this, in my honest opinion. So I suggest you watch that video and I have links in there to other things. And also I tagged you um, talking about GNS and what they're doing. But funny, I got a reply from the CEO, Salvatore Paella of um, Hellbiz, but who did I not hear from? That's right, David Mitchery. Not a good look, David, just saying. Um, at any rate, guys, I really believe that, you know, Mullen has to start fighting back. They are under attack, bottom line. Um, you know, whether you're watching this video because you love Mullen or hate Mullen, I'm a Mullen shareholder and I believe in the potential of the company. But I do believe, like I stated, and I've been very upfront about, some things need to change. That being said, I still think that their stock, um, it's being really, really heavily manipulated in the market and there's tons of proof out there. Um, you know, I'd love to see Mullen go on the defense and hire Wes Christian and this FBI agent and join the fight. That's ultimately, David, take some of this money that you're getting from shareholders and do that with it. That's what we need to happen here. Um, all right, guys, sorry. My little rant's over, but it needs to be said and it needs to be heard. So please tag him in this video and share it. Um, if he gets enough of it, maybe he'll actually watch it and do something to help the situation because seriously, we are not in a good place and they're, they're blatantly attacking the stock and it's disgusting. And their goal is to bankrupt Mullen. That I can promise you. All right. So while the meeting was adjourned to January 25th, solely with respect to proposal two, which seeks to increase the number of authorized common stock to five billion from 1.75 billion. Mullen cited needing more time. All right, guys, Mullen needs more time, correct. The reason they need more time is because, like I stated previously, they have been sued and there is a question as to regards to whether the shares issued at the last shareholders meeting was done legally. I'm not going to get into that because I have no clue whether it was or wasn't. So I will not comment on that because I don't know. Um, however, I will say that this proposal 
comes with a relationship to proposal number one, being that kind of like a threat, guys. Like a, I would call this like a toddler response. Um, if you don't give me what I want, i.e., five, whatever, five million, five hundred million. What what is it? Let's go back. Sorry, um, five billion. Excuse me, dear Lord. Five, if you don't give me five billion shares or basically 3.25 billion because we already have 1.75 billion if you don't give me another 3.25 million essentially one and a half xing the share count that it's currently at which is ridiculous then i'm gonna do a reverse split well guess what guys don't consider that threat and take it seriously vote how you want but that's a bunch of BS because he knows as much as we do, if you're a savvy investor, that his threat is unfounded. If he wants to do a reverse stock split, he's going to do one. If he has to do it to save the company and he has to do it in order to stay on the Russell um, 2000, then guess what? He's going to do the reverse stock split whether or not you vote to give him more shares or not. And I'm sorry, but over my dead body, am I giving more shares? I voted no. Um, because personally, I think it's um, unnecessary, this amount. If you wanted a reasonable amount, maybe I'd consider it. But to be asking shareholders that have already been massively diluted for another one and a half times the float, I think, with all due respect, that you're out of your mind. That's ridiculous. And it's... It's just diluting us even more than we already are. And that's wrong. No, sorry. And to then add a threat to it, like basically, if you don't want me to do the reverse split, then you have to vote on that. Because he says straight out that um, if shareholders vote against proposal number two to give him the more shares, Mullins board will receive the power to effectuate a reverse split at any time before or on December 1st, 2023. Okay, guys, it's it's a blatantly there to scare you and it's a naked threat because guess what? If he has to do it, he's gonna do it anyways. So uh, don't let that persuade your vote. This is seriously a toddler type threat and it's kind of funny when you think about it. Anyways, rent over on that one. But the big news coming out of the meeting seems to be the reverse stock split amendment, preliminary approval. However, whether or not Mullen files the amendment will depend on the results of a court hearing scheduled for January 23rd at the Delaware's Court of Chancery. Now, guys, I already told you that this is true and that right now this vote they can't file because it all determines on whether there's enough shareholders. If you watched my video last night, I explained this. And I'm still adamant, even though he took the vote today, it doesn't mean anything um, until he finds that out. Um, but that being said, I'm glad that the vote approved because we needed it to if you want the stock to have a fighting chance. If not, I can promise you what would have happened. So that's a positive as far as the vote we didn't take to increase the shares. I'm sorry, but over my dead body, will I vote to increase it by that much? David, I would highly recommend if you're watching this, you consider changing the amount that you're asking for. It is really excessive and um, more dilution to that extent is absolutely just disgusting in my opinion. But at any rate, um, guys... Until we have the January 23rd hearing at the Court of Chancery to find out about whether or not they were allowed to increase the shares to begin with after the first vote, um, then we're not going to know whether he's going to file this amendment or not. And we're going to have to wait for more news as to what's to come with that. Now, just quickly, I do have some positive information to share with you, despite the fact that today was kind of sad. We were down a penny during the day, but we were up a penny in the after hours to make it kind of flat. They tried to scare people going into the shareholders meeting, you know, shorting it more and then bringing, you know, came back up afterwards, returning the shares or whatever they did. But look at what that created here. A nice doji, and this doji that I have circled indicates a reversal. So I think today we found our bottom for at least the time being, and I think tomorrow you're going to see a move to the upside. 
Now, obviously, there's no guarantees in that. Um, however, this candle, that's what that's telling me. And this is a daily candle. And just um, so you know, Mullen is number four on the popularity list. So that's good. That means we're still trending. And also, normally before a stock makes a move up, its volume starts to deplete. And you may have noticed that over the past several days, Mullen's volume has been less than average. That's very normal, and that actually helps me to confirm my thesis that tomorrow we move to the upside. Um, or we have maybe another day of a doji. Sometimes you get two or three days in a row before you get a move up like that. So that's also another possibility. But um, tomorrow's Friday, and you know what I say about Fridays. At any rate, guys, thank you so much for watching, and please smash that like button for me as it helps out with the algorithm.